Next, from Chicago, Governor Rauner holds a press conference to announce the signing into law of HB 40, which expands taxpayer-subsidized abortions for women covered by Medicaid and state employee insurance. This runs about 25 minutes. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. House Bill 40 has finally been sent to my desk this week. HB 40 addresses many very difficult, very emotional issues. The passions, the emotions, the sentiments on both sides of these issues are very powerful. I respect them very much as a person. And as governor, it is my job to do the best I can to represent all the people of Illinois on these difficult issues. The moral argument against HB 40 is very powerful. In my view, it's not debatable. It is irrefutable. I respect it very much. And through my life, I have respected that view and supported candidates for office who are pro-life. And I have voted for and supported public officials and public servants in office who are pro-life. On the other side of this issue, the arguments, the position for women's rights, women, women's equality, women's health are very powerful. I support them. I personally am pro-choice. I always have been. And I made no qualms about that when I was elected governor. And I have not and never will change my views. I personally believe that a woman should have, must have the right to decide what goes on in her own body that a woman should have the right to decide her health care. I personally believe that a woman should have the right to choose, make this decision herself in conjunction with those she seeks counsel from, her physician, her family, her religious leaders, as, as she chooses. I also believe that no woman should be forced to make a d different decision than another woman would make purely based on her income. I believe that a woman living with limited financial means should not be put in a position where she has to choose something different than a woman of higher income would be able to choose. These are my personal beliefs. I tried in the spring, and I've tried for months as this bill was debated and ultimately passed, to find common ground with both sides of this issue. We were unable to do that. The passions run too deep. As a result, today I am announcing that I am signing House Bill 40. I am joined today, I'm honored to be joined today 
by women of Illinois who are passion, passionate about these issues. And I would like to ask a few of them to speak to you today. Um, perhaps we could start with Kareen Wood. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Corrine Wood. I was told we we're supposed to spell our names and say what we do. It's C O R I N N E Wood. I'm a former lieutenant governor, but perhaps more importantly for today's purposes, I'm here as someone who has been fighting for women's health issues for decades. And not just women's health issues across the board, but also women's reproductive health issues. And I can tell you it is a challenging issue. And that's why today is so important because we have a governor who is standing up for the right thing for all the women of Illinois. <laughs> He's standing up for women's health. He's standing up to putting an end to this partisan bickering. He's making sure that we're moving forward as opposed to moving backwards. And I think you're going to hear some pretty compelling stories from some women who have been intimately impacted by the likes of HB 40. It's always about what doing what's right not necessarily what's politically expedient. And this governor has the courage to stand up and do that. So it gives me great pleasure. Welcome, Brittany. Brittany, you know? Thank Brittany. you. My name is Brittany Mostiller. I am the executive director of Chicago Abortion Fund. And my name is spelled B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. Last name, M-O-S-T-I-L-L-E-R. When I became pregnant in 2007, a few months after giving birth to my third daughter, I knew right away that it was not the time for me to have another child. I knew that the best decision for my own health, for my three children, and for our futures was to end the pregnancy. Unfortunately, I was met with many roadblocks between making my decision and getting the abortion I needed. A decade later, I still know it was the right decision for me. I also know that it's wrong to make anyone go through what I did just to get necessary reproductive care. And it doesn't have to be this way. Today, Illinois has taken an incredibly important step towards justice for women like me. By signing HB 40, which passed with strong majorities in our Illinois House and Senate, Governor Rauner affirms the right to legal abortion in our state guarding against the awful prospect of a Supreme Court ruling that overturns Roe v. Wade and eliminates the legal right to abortion nationwide. But protecting the legal right to abortion isn't enough because a right in theory only is no right at all. That's why it's so important to lift the ban on, on insurance coverage for abortion for low-income people in our state, and HB 40 does exactly that. I learned the hard way what happens when abortion coverage is denied. I, and I want a better future for my children and for our state. When Medicaid insurance doesn't cover abortion, it forces women to make impossible decisions and endure added delays, harm, and stigma. I had to raise the funds, request time off from work, and make my way to the appointment, all of which was made more difficult because I was already struggling financially. My story is my own but it's sadly not unique. The pain and punishment of bans on abortion coverage are well documented. And bans on coverage, like most restrictions on abortion care, fall hardest on people who are already struggling, women of color, and young people who are forced to try to pay for this care out of pocket. Today, I'm executive director of Chicago Abortion Fund, the same abortion fund that helped me. And I'm proud to help fund abortion care for our callers. But we'll never be able to meet the full need with our efforts alone, which is why my abortion should, I'm sorry, which is why abortion should be covered by insurance, however much money someone makes. 
I know that the work of the Chicago Abortion Fund will remain as necessary as ever, but with HB 40 signed into law, there will be fewer women who are forced to turn their lives upside down to pay for legal and necessary medical care. Today's victory affirms that women's lives and decisions have value and that we are best positioned to make important decisions about our health and future without politically motivated bans standing in the way. Thank you. And thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name's Lori Chaiten. That's L-O-R-I-E. C-H-A-I-T-E-N. I'm the director of the Women's and Reproductive Rights Project for the ACLU of Illinois. And I am delighted to be here to mark this enormous step forward for the women of Illinois as Governor Rahner signs House Bill 40 into law. In 1975, the Illinois General Assembly added dangerous language to the Illinois abortion law, stating an intention to make abortion illegal if the U.S. Supreme Court ever overturned Roe. By removing this so-called trigger language, House Bill 40 ensures that abortion will remain legal in Illinois as it is today, regardless of what happens in Washington. There is simply too much risk to women's health to leave this language in our law. By signing House Bill 40, Governor Rauner enacts into law critical protections for the women of Illinois, and the state of Illinois proclaims that we are not going back. House Bill 40 also removes provisions from Illinois law that deny abortion coverage for many women who get their insurance from the government, including low-income women and many state employees. This bill backs up our state's values by ending political interference with insurance coverage for abortion and ensuring that a woman isn't treated differently just because of her income or where she gets her insurance. It simply makes common sense. When health programs for women with low incomes cover birth control and abortion, and not just childbirth, and people can plan if and when to have children, it's good for them and it's good for society as a whole. The federal ban on insurance coverage for abortion, known as the Hyde Amendment, has been in place for more than 40 years, and it has left a trail of devastation in its wake. Research shows that restricting Medicaid coverage for abortion forces one in four poor women seeking abortion to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term. And a woman who wants to get an abortion but is denied is more likely to fall into poverty than a woman who can get the abortion that she seeks. For a low-income woman in Illinois forced to make the impossible decision between paying rent, buying food, or paying for her abortion, this is about health, it's about economic security, and it is about living with dignity. As the U.S. Supreme Court has made clear, only through control of our reproductive lives can women play an equal role in the professional, academic, and social spheres of our nation. So today, Illinois stands up for equality, for economic security, for the well-being of women, of families, and of the state as a whole. I want to say thank you to House Bill 40's sponsors, Representative Feigenholz and Senator Staines. I want to thank the General Assembly and thank you, Governor Rauner, for valuing women, protecting health, and making clear that Illinois refuses to go back to the pre-road days when abortion was illegal and women risked their lives and their health as they sought this essential health care. Thank you. All right. uh, uh, we open it up to questions. <coughs> Governor, you know that uh, together there are some, there are some representatives waiting to speak to us here outside the room. Um, who are going to tell us that you betrayed the right to life movement and you made a promise that you broke. Uh, I am being true to my values and my views. I have always been true to those. In my discussions with the General Assembly and others in the spring, I proposed what I hope would be a compromise that they, that both sides could agree to. Neither side would agree. I have to make a decision. 
I have to do what I believe is right for the people of Illinois, and I have to be consistent with my values, and that's what I've done. Are they misleading us when they say you promised to sign the bill as it is? To veto. I'm sorry, to veto the bill. I am being consistent with my values. I attempted, as I said earlier, I attempted to propose a compromise in the spring, and I've attempted to advocate for that compromise since the spring with leaders, legislators, with advocates on both sides of this issue to deal with the elements of HB 40 in two steps. Trigger now, other issues later. Neither side would support that approach. As a result, I have to decide, and I've made my decision. Your tone is very much that of someone who feels that he's, he's been abandoned by by the lawmakers in Springfield, and forced to go alone on this. You, you, you. Well, you seem to be saying as much. You said to us last week that you were consulting with both sides of this issue and reviewing what you knew of the bill at that point. Um, was the first statement a part of the discussion? Have you relied on her through this process? Um, I have relied on dozens and dozens of people who I respect. I'm certainly the first lady. I talk to the first lady every day on many topics. She's my best friend. Um, but I have met with legislators on both sides of this issue. I have met with advocates on both sides of this issue, community leaders, women on both sides of this issue, and I've tried to listen and learn, pay respect. The views on these issues are, are deeply held, strongly, strongly felt. And I've tried to make a decision that I believe is best with. How surprised would you be if you get a primary challenge out of this? Pol politics or politics. Conservatives are, are very upset with this already, um, and there's a good chance you could lose a lot of Republican support over this, particularly downstate. Politics or politics? Why not? Why not AD? No support on either side of the aisle for that. How big of a deal should this be seen? I mean, right now, we're getting a lot of questions about what this means for your political future. Is this a fair way for voters to judge? I mean, is this is that significant? Or are you going to tell GOP legislators, hey, we've got a budget, and there are other things that they should figure out where they stand with you? Where, where does it lie in that range of political issues or policy issues? Certainly, this is a very, very significant uh, issue, as I cannot emphasize enough. The passions on both sides run strong, and I deeply respect, deeply respect the moral arguments, the religious arguments, the faith-based arguments against HB 40. I understand them. I respect them. As I have stated, I have my views, I have to be, I must be consistent with my views and I've attempted to be consistent while also accommodating, trying to find common ground on both sides of the issue. We're not able to do that. You're raising a very important point. This is a very important subject. Where I am strongly working every day is to create a better future for Illinois on jobs, more jobs and higher family incomes, on taxes, bringing down our tax burden. It's too high. We need government that's more efficient and effective and transparent. On education, and we've achieved historic accomplishments in education in, in every regard, but I want outstanding education and we'll, can, there's much more to be done. And also political reform. I believe passionately to, for Illinois to have a better future, we need uh, bipartisan government. We need competitive general elections, which we have not had for years. Um, we need not gerrymandered districts, and we need term limits on elected officials. I've been passionate about these issues. This is, these are the issues I lead on. I talk about them every day. 
And these are the issues I hope we can come together on and make great accomplishments on together in the General Assembly. These are bipartisan issues. We should have agreement to grow more jobs, reduce the regulatory burden on our businesses, become more competitive. We should have agreement on ways to make our government more efficient, shrink the bureaucracy so we can bring down our property taxes. We should have agreement on education improvements. And even President Obama and I, and he and I are on different ends of the political spectrum, agree that term limits can help end corruption and that redistricting reform can restore competitive general elections and democracy. These are bipartisan issues that we should be able to achieve together, term limits and fair maps. And these are the issues that I hope I can bring both parties together in the General Assembly uh, in the coming weeks and months to, so we can achieve a better future for everyone. Governor, there was some analysis you look, you of this look, that said you look almost morose uh, as you're announcing this decision. The people behind you seem to be satisfied, but uh, you said you've made the right decision. Have you made the best decision? A decision that you're satisfied with? I have made the decision that I think is best for the people of Illinois and, and consistent with my values. Governor, on every single one of the issues that you listed that you lead on, Economic yes, issues. yes. Is it fair to call you a social conservative? I don't know about labels. I'm not going to get into labels. No. There was some analysis that, that suggested you were going to be in a, in a rock and a hard place on this. You were going to be losing politically on one side or the other, regardless of which way you chose. Did you feel like you were in between a rock and a hard place on this? Um, I ran for governor as a volunteer to create a better future because I love Illinois. I just love Illinois. I was born here, raised six children here, built businesses here, have my deepest friends here, friendships here. I love Illinois. This is home. And it's broken my heart to see what our political system and our politicians and our government has done to our state for decades. To change that, fundamentally change that, is the reason I ran for governor. We have to grow more jobs in a competitive economy. We have to bring down our tax burden. We have to get the corruption out of our government through term limits and fair maps. This is the reason I ran. I will never give up on this. There are many challenges, many obstacles that get erected along the way from the folks who would like to defend the status quo and have more of the same. But we can't give up as a people. And I will be asking Democrats and Republicans to come together to create a better future together. The challenges that we have are really not partisan. These are not partisan issues. Bringing down property taxes is not partisan. Term limits are not partisan. Fair maps are not partisan. Getting regulatory relief and cutting the red tape on businesses to get more companies here is not partisan. I'm asking legislators, Democrats and Republicans, I'm asking the people of Illinois, regardless of their affiliations. Let's unite together to get these things done. That's where I want to lead. That's where I hope to take the state. Thanks very much, everybody. Okay. I'm just a little confused about the veto threat in the spring. Are you saying that back then when you said that you were going to veto the bill, that was because you were trying to get both sides of the table to negotiate a To see if we could get agreement on an amendatory veto, which the outcome of a amendatory veto, it's a two-step deal with the deal as I said, I think I, I think I told you, I told members of the press, do two-step, let's deal with the trigger language now and other issues later. So I thought that might be a compromise that's consistent with my views because I support um, low-income women having the same opportunity, the same ability to choose as higher-income women. But a, a two-step process was not embraced by either side. Thanks very much, everybody. You're watching the Illinois Channel.